My name is Marie Sales. We're in the city of Tustin. Here in my home with my family. This is my son, Angel, Gabriel, my brother, Carlos, my nieces, Destiny and Desiree. And we're here to talk about Um, we're here to talk about my son, Paul Joseph Quintanar. Right now, it's the holidays. He would have turned 23 on December 29th. Paul was a, a loving, kind-hearted boy who wouldn't hurt anyone. He would give a shirt if somebody needed a place to stay, if somebody needed something to eat. He wasn't a troublemaker. Uh, he didn't have a, a background. He wanted to be a model, you know, he was a modern day hippie. My name's Carlos Sales. I'm Paul's uncle. We were there when he needed us. We were there when he had his seizures. You know, we helped my sister raise him. He was a good kid. Something happened to my nephew. And they told me to go to the freeway now. So I went over there down Red Hill and the cops were all blocked off. I go, it's my nephew there. And he goes, well, I'm telling you, go back now. We, you know, we already knew more or less what happened. I lost it. I completely lost it. I did not, I was stunned, shocked, and I could not believe what I just heard. And my brother started screaming, and the whole family came over. <laughs> So we're right here on Red Hill Nissan, and this is a 7-Eleven where Paul and his friends used to hang out. And he came and bought uh, a bottle of water the night he was killed. And if we go back around to um, the back of 7-Eleven, uh, that's where the cops had stopped him, and it began. The last phone call that I had, 7.30 and 8.30 within that hour, that's when it all occurred. So I'm here um, where it all started and we're gonna meet up with Kenya so she can tell us what happened that night. Hello, Kenya. This is Kenya, she was with Paul. It was around, I'd say eight, and we just came to 7-Eleven to get something to drink. And so we came to the back and we just started talking and then all of a sudden the cops come and like they shine their light on us and they make us sit down right around here. around here and they make us sit down and they start questioning us and asking us like what are we doing here and how old we are and who are we. They start checking him, they take off his shoes, they look underneath his shirt and his pockets, they take off his beanie. They pretty much strip him of everything. They have him standing with his hands behind his back and there's around four cops around him and they're like telling him something but I can't hear, I'm not in hearing range and I'm sure they scared him or something. So right when he has his hands behind his back, he all of a sudden he grabs his arms and he pulls them and he jumps that little fence and he runs across the, the gas station on, on to Taco Bell. The other officer picked up one officer and they both ran. The third officer ran back to the car and chased him in the car. I stayed right by the fence and I just watched him run. And he was barefoot too, he ran and I'm sure he ran across the street onto the Taco Bell parking lot. They take advantage of the authority that they are given. Just because they have a badge, they think they can go around doing as they like. Lives are lost, families are hurting, and it's not gonna be given back. All the time, all the memories, all our lives, they're changed. The militarization that we've seen in Tustin, we've seen helicopters, we've seen tanks, we've seen snipers. So this is where he ran in the back of, and he ran out that way. When I'm on the street, it kills me on the inside because I hear him screaming, Mom, help me, Mom, help me. There were so many people here that night saying, oh, he's trying to get home. He said he was trying to get home to you. You know, and every time I'm here, I can hear, like, I can see him. I can see him running. I can hear him screaming for me to help him. And I wasn't able to. 
the, you know, I wasn't here. It was, I was a minute too late. And, and this is why I come out in the same corner and I protest. No justice, no peace. Fuck the police. Because that's what I feel. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but that's what I feel. You have people say, what does it mean to you that you lost your son? What does it mean to me? How do I feel? Every being, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here. I don't want to live anymore. I want to be with my son. I want to go home. I want to be with him. I know I have to be strong and I have three more kids. But this is my son. This is my life. I have four boys. And now one's gone. My heart is broken. It will never be fixed again. I have to celebrate his birthday here. I have to, it's Christmas. And what am I doing instead of celebrating Christmas with my son? I'm decorating his memorial or I'm at the cemetery and I'm decorating the cemetery and I'm like, why do I have to be here? Why am I here decorating this when he should be with me? <laughs> he was my life. I, I brought him into this world and I had to lay him down because three officers didn't know how to do their job. I miss you, boo. I want you here with me. I want you with me. You didn't let it go. They didn't have took you. You're gone. You're gone because of them. And you should be here with me. I shouldn't have to be doing this. <clears throat> we'll get justice. I will make sure of it. I will not stop. I will do whatever I have to do. I love you, Paul. I'm gonna miss you. There's no justice, there's no peace. There's no justice in Tustin. Spending the holidays without my son is an injustice. And I want him here with me. And I know that's selfish because he's in a better place. But he died a horrible, tragic death that nobody should ever have to go through. Paul is Native. He's a Navajo, Apache, and Hopi Indian. Native American Indian, and he has some Hispanic in him. So he's running. He's running through the freeway underpass. One of his friends sees him, and he says, what happened? He goes, I'm trying to get home to my mom. And at that time, I lived right here at the corner. Um, they chased him all the way back and forth through this, through this street right here. And they chased him all the way up. He crossed near Starbucks. The cops had blocked him off and chased him again. And they chased him all the way up into this um, this freeway off ramp. He was running for his life. The cops changed their story twice. They said that they were on the embankment and then they said they were at Wendy's. He made it back here. He, he ran back over here. They said cops were following them, falling on the floor because they couldn't catch him. He had no shoes on. He had no hat, no pants. They chased them up this embankment with, gu with guns drawn. We know they said that there was guns drawn. I don't know if they said to stop or they'll shoot. Paul wouldn't have ran. Why would he run up here? He, was, he had no place to go or they chased him up here. 
and he, uh, I don't, uh, they chased him all the way up to the embankment. At that point, he was chased into the freeway by the police. And his body was thrown completely across the other side. My name is Marie Sales. I'm standing underneath the five freeway. My mother-in-law was murdered. The grandmother was murdered on this side of the freeway. My son was murdered on this side of the freeway. This is the tormented walk my children and my family have to go through every day. You know, a lot of these killings are senseless killings. You killed a 19-year-old boy for a bottle of water and because you were curious. And it just destroyed the whole family. These cops have to value human life. I want the police to know that they killed a kid, that he didn't do shit. Here in Tustin, the cops are um, harassful. Every time I pass by, there's a cop looking at me when I would go to school or coming home. Like, just mad doggy me. They only see it because of the badge. The badge is their way out of trouble. The way out of everything. The way they won't get arrested. The way they won't get in trouble because of that badge. If you see a kid getting harassed, videotape it. Get the pictures, get the names, get the badge numbers, get everything. It's time to take a stand. You make sure your camera's ready and be able to have all eyes on the cops, no matter, no matter what. He's in God's hands and God's taking care of him so that way I can stay here and fight for him and bring justice for his name. <laughs>